So as you can see, behaviors are tremendously powerful. They're interesting. They're fun to use. They inspire you to do all sorts of cool things. And, and that's one of the great things about them is that they encourage you to explore and play and see what happens. But there are some times when you need very precise things to happen. You know, for example, that this ball must go from the upper left corner right to the center of the screen and it must get there exactly on frame 25 when the music kicks in. Or, you know, anytime you need to do something very precise, that's when keyframes come into play because keyframes allow you to be extremely precise and allow you to define exactly when an object should move or whatever you want and you can keyframe every single parameter so any parameter you see in here in the properties tab or in this case I'm looking at a shape so any parameter in the shape tab the fill the outline and even behaviors the behavior themselves you can you can keyframe those although we're not going to get into that right now so I'm just going to do something very simple, start with the simple properties, and let's just say we want to basically move this object, we want to start it in the upper left up here, and we want to fly it down to the center, and we want to start it exactly on frame 25. I just navigate right to frame 25 here, and I'm going to turn on the record button. And when I turn on that record button, you notice how all my little parameters in the inspector turn red. That's because they are now being keyframed. And so because I'm parked on that frame at that point in time, this setting is all going to be recorded. And if I move to another point in time, let's just say we go to frame 150, and I drag that to the center, automatically, I'm just using those dynamic guides there to line it up. It's perfectly set to the center. Automatically, I get that red path, which indicates a motion path. If I go back and play that, now it moves right from frame 25 to frame 150, and it goes right from the first spot to the second spot. So very easily, you can perform precise keyframing. Now, I want to remind you, whenever you're doing this, if you use this animation button, this the record button, turn it off as soon as you're done. Otherwise, you're liable to screw something up or accidentally keyframe or make an adjustment to something that you didn't intend. So I would say use that very carefully. You press the A key to turn that on and off. And that's really simple and easy to remember if you remember animation. But if you're coming from Final Cut Pro, uh, you may hit A more frequently than you might realize because that's the key that takes you back to your basic arrow tool in Final Cut. So when you switch to motion, you want to be very careful you don't accidentally press that A key. And again, hopefully the little red indicators over here help you realize that you have and that you're in the animation mode when your A is on. So while it's on right here, I'm going to make another little change. Let's say we want to go to the shape. We want to change the color. So right now I've got the color set at purple. Let's change that. Let's start it at black. And so at this point in time, it's going to be black. I'm going to go later in the, in the sequence right here to about there to frame 258. And I'm going to change that color to yellow or yellow-orange. And now it's going to move. Now, again, because it was already set at the beginning over here, it starts at that purple. It goes to black at the point when I set to black. And then it changes to that color, yellowish, orange, whatever it was I set. And so I can do that simply by keyframing those little parameters just by changing the color on a particular frame. So that's the great power of this animation button. You just go to a frame, and on that frame, you just change the parameters you want to change. I can you know, add a little movement to my path here. Uh, let's actually make this guy a little bit, uh, let's stretch him out so he's a little bit more oblong, and then we can rotate him. So I'm going to do a little rotation here, grab that rotation handle, and make a little... 90 degree adjustment there and now again it remembers its starting point and now it's going to do that little change and then stay in that setting from that point forward and you can experiment with all the different parameters again there's no limit to what you can keyframe 